Somehow, though, it would seem that the daily cancellation was made for her. Lena Dunham has, I don't think, ever been canceled on this show. Sadly, she dropped off the face of the earth right around the time when I began this segment. Some might even speculate that the timing was not a coincidence. Perhaps she fled from public view in order to avoid the wrath of the daily cancellation. She was briefly back on the radar early in 2021 when she released a plus-sized fashion line that was immediately slammed by critics for not catering to fat people enough. Um, the woke crowd claimed that Dunham's new brand failed the inclusivity test because though it had clothing for large people, it did not have any for very large and very, very large people. So Dunham's attempt to relaunch her career crashed and burned as the woke zombies swarmed the rocket before takeoff and devoured everybody inside, which is probably why they need bigger clothing. But now Dunham is making her real comeback. And last week, a lengthy puff piece in The Hollywood Reporter featuring glamour shots like this one, which you can see here. There you go. Uh, Feast your eyes on that for a moment. Announced that Dunham was back on the scene and she's not going anywhere. And her new film, Sharp Stick, has debuted. The website moviemaker.com quotes her Q&A after the premiere at Sundance, where she explains what the film is about and what she hopes to achieve with it. The article says, quote, Lena Dunham's Sharp Stick shows the porn industry in a rare positive light. She says that was 100% intentional. Now, side note, you're of course filled with a deep sense of foreboding at the thought that Lena Dunham directed and starred in a film about porn. But just to put your mind at ease, we're not playing any clips. We will stick instead with what she has said about the movie and continuing. She says, I think many of us were, especially people who started maybe like reading second wave feminist literature early. We were shaped by a kind of feminism that maybe didn't give porn its due as something that can be really healing for people. Dunham, who directed, wrote, and acted in Sharp Stick, said Saturday in a Q&A after the film's world premiere at Sundance, Quote, I think we have found, me- we have enough messaging in society, and probably in my 20s I contributed to it, that said like, porn is ruining sex and it's making it so hard for people. But I really wanted this to show the way that porn can liberate people and that it's an industry that's just as complicated as Hollywood and as vast and probably more prolific. And I think that's really important for us to recognize the very healthy role that porn can play and the important role that porn actors play in shaping people's identities. Now, we should mention here that Dunham's new film has been described even by mainstream critics who are predisposed to appreciate Dunham's work as, quote, heinous, hollow, amateurish, cringe, uncomfortable, and problematic. Those are also all the adjectives that I would use to describe a Lena Dunham starring film about the wonders of porn, even though I haven't seen it. I never will, because I'd sooner scoop my own eyes out with a rusty spoon than watch something like that. But even if the film fails to impress the critics, The basic message is one that would generally enjoy wide agreement among many people in our culture, especially on the left. Porn is liberating and empowering, we're told. Healing, even, as Dunham claims. Is that true? In a word, no. Pornography is about as liberating, empowering, and healing as heroin. When Dunham calls it all of those things, what she really means is that it's pleasurable. And she draws no distinction between pleasure and liberation or pleasure and joy or pleasure and love because for her, as for so many others in our culture, momentary pleasure is the highest good that we can hope to achieve. A life packed full of moments of surface level pleasure is mistaken then for a fulfilled and joyful life. That is, these two things are mistaken until you look around and see the results. Because if porn is so wonderful and healing, then you'd expect for one thing, that the people in the porn industry would be the most joyful and healed of all. And yet we find among people in that line of work, sky-high rates of suicide and drug abuse, just as we find among prostitutes. And the people who appear in porn videos are just prostitutes after all. As for the viewer, when you look at porn, you become a faceless onlooker, peering like a stalker through the window of a motel while someone else has sex with a hooker they hired on the street corner. But it's worse than that, really, because it's less honest. At least the peeping Tom is forced to reckon with his behavior. He's out in the cold, ducking behind bushes, watching these two go at it. And from there, he sees the whole act, the whole dismal exchange. He doesn't get to dip in and out of a dozen scenes, consuming portions and glances before breezing along to the next. He doesn't get to close the tab when it's all over and act like nothing happened. He's there as a stranger in the dark, and he has to go home and deal with the reality of what he's become. The porn viewer, on the other hand, feels insulated. What he's doing really is identical in a lot of ways, but it doesn't seem that way because it's safer. It's a screen, not a window. She's an amateur porn star, not a prostitute. His actions are legal. 
even normal by today's standards. Well, he's different, he tells himself. He's better. That's a lie. Because everything about porn is a lie. Porn makes human beings into objects. It turns the sexual act into something transactional and mercenary. You know, sex between a married couple in the privacy of their bedroom is an expression of love and devotion. So then what does sex on camera for the viewing public express? And what does the viewer ex- what does the viewer express by viewing it? I mean, the supporters of porn, they're, they're the first ones to claim that this is an, is an act of expression. Okay, I'll take you at your word. What is it expressing exactly? Certainly not empowerment. A woman who feels like she has power over her life does not whore herself out to the porn industry. And a man, or woman for that matter, who feels like he has power over his own life does not make a whore of himself by watching it. The porn industry, along with sites like Pornhub and so on, they profit off of the willful self-degradation of both the viewer and the viewed to the tune of many billions of dollars. You know, it's hard to argue that consumers are ever really empowered in their role as consumer, even when they're consuming something innocuous or morally neutral. I've never felt empowered while waiting in line at Target, which isn't to say there's, that there's anything morally wrong with shopping at a real t- retail outlet. It's just to say that I would never try to find anything poetic or beautiful about the experience. So then what about consumers of the porn industry's product? If you're not empowered while pushing a cart around the aisles of a big box retailer, how in the hell could you be empowered in your role as a faceless third-party participant in virtual prostitution? And how could the prostitutes themselves be empowered? No, everyone involved is being used, dehumanized, and objectified. Far from being healed, they're being damaged. Though they may find some pleasure in the harm being done to them, just as you may find pleasure in the brain damage you suffer from drinking too much whiskey, that can't be confused with joy, or least of all, empowerment. And this is all why today, finally, we have the honor to say to Lena Dunham, you are canceled. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with all your friends.